Hi everyone, hope you're all well. Martin and I are fine. Uh, Martin will join us a little bit later. At the moment he's, uh, he's rowing across the channel again, um, but we do need him to do the videoing for me. Um, but I just need to have a little chat with you about one or two things. Um, this is the dressing question. Um, I've got a, um, a lot of interest in this dress. I had it on one of the sewing channels and I've been answering questions all day on machine smocking. Um, <laughs> but you're lucky you've got me. I can show you. I can tell you it's very difficult trying to tell people how to do this just in words. Anyway, um, so this is the, the pattern that I used. Right now. I made quite a lot of modifications with this, but you need not worry about that at the moment because I just want to get you on the smock in for the front and show you how to do that. Uh, the other pattern that I ordered that only came today was this one. You can use this one. This is for, um, this is for an older age group, um, up, just up to four years. I don't think you could put a, a little girl more than five, six years in this dress, actually. Once they get to school, they get their own style and watch their peers. But anyway, this is it. So um, I'm going to start by showing you that whatever pattern you use, you don't have to use a specific pattern for smocking. This is what I've been trying to tell people this morning. You don't need a specific pattern and I'll show you how to adapt any pattern providing it has a, a seam somewhere along here. You can't just do a little A-line dress into it. It's got to be that style of dress. All right. So that's that. Now I learned quite a lot while I was making this dress and uh, the main thing is that you can't use a thick cotton or any cotton other than something like cotton lawn or an Indian cotton. Okay, this fabric that I used is very, very thin. Now, unless you use a thin fabric, you can't gather it up tight enough because it becomes too thick. And then when it's too thick, you can't do the embroidery stitches over it. All right, so I'm going to get on and show you how to machine. So please use a thin piece. Now, it doesn't matter how much fabric they tell you to use on the pattern. I want you to use 50 inches of a thin cotton. All right. 50 inches by 20 inches. 20 inches is the length and 50 inches each side of this dress to gather. Otherwise, it won't have enough gathering gathering in it 50 inches all right or that could it could be just the width of the material all right all right so I'm going to start gathering in just a moment um this um this takes eight rows of gathering stitch on a number four okay um yeah do the do them about half an inch apart the rows i'll show you how to keep it moderately straight uh, straight anyway and the most important thing is a really really good matching thread for the back of your work for the background on your work because this stitch that you're doing now you don't want to be able to see it okay here's the little dress i've done all right, and all you can really see is the blue standing out. You, you, you probably, if you look carefully, you can see the other colour, but it's not prominent. And so, please don't make a feature of this, um, this as as near as you can to the background colour of your fabric. So I'm now on the machine. Now, when you start this gathering, you must start in about two inches from the beginning and then you must stop about two inches from the end. So just keep your eye focused on this piece, the side of your foot, and run this right the way to the end, all right? Try and keep it as straight as you can because otherwise you're going to see... Um, the embroidery will be going all over the place as well. You'll see how. Okay, so I'm now at the end. No back stitching and leave a fair old bit of thread at the end because you need to pull it. Right, so I'm now starting the second row and I've asked Martin to get the camera as close as he possibly can so you can see how far away from your previous line of stitching you need to be. Right, so 
So I'm now finishing my second line of stitching and um, I'm going to take this off and I'm going to carry on and do another six rows of stitching. So I've now done the rows of stitching, but if you're observant, you will see I've only done seven rows um, because I did them a little bit too wide, I think. But anyway, seven or eight, don't worry about it. So now this has to fit on here. So when you gather this up, it also gets shorter this way, not just lengthways. So it's best just to have a row of stitching showing there. Right, so I'm now going to pull the threads up. Right, so you've got your lines of stitching, whether they be seven or eight. Now, the reason that you have to start in and finish about two inches or so from the end is that so you don't accidentally get hold of one of these um, threads underneath. Because if you do that, you won't be able to pull up this gathering. It will get knotted, all right? So you're going to pull it. Now, don't be... Don't go crazy with it. Be quite gentle, but pull all four threads at the same time. All right, and pull it until you are about halfway along. Okay, I'm just going to go to there for now so I can show you. Get them out the way and then find the rest of them. In my case, I've only got three, but you may have four if you haven't done anything as silly as me. Okay, so get hold of those there. Make sure nothing is tangled up underneath. And get this lot gathered up. And then start the other end and pull those threads until these mat until these meet rather. So here we are. I've gathered this all up, pulled all the threads, and this is what um what the result is now what you've got to do now you've got to push it all along all right keep it very even all right this is what went wrong on the sewing bee i'm afraid firstly there was not enough material secondly the pattern was dreadful and hanging around by some child's backside which it has to be up by the yoke so Right, now what you've got to do is you've got to get this even. And if you find you've got a bubble somewhere, or like a piece here, for instance, that I can see that hasn't been gathered properly, get hold of that top thread and pull it. Now, you need, you need it to be a certain width because this has to fit on there, that has to be cut out. So let me just get the tape measure so I can see exactly what small, oh, no, Okay, so you've got to be able to get this whole piece onto um, this piece of um, smocking. So let's say you make it 12, 13 inches, just to be sure. All right, so I'm quite happy now with the spacing of these gathers. Now, this isn't where this part ends, all right, because this is another problem on the sewing bee. At the moment, this stitching is very unstable. If you started to machine along there, it would just push all these gathers to the side. So we have to now stabilise this work that we've done. Right, so this part is very, very important. You need your stitch on a number three and all those stitches that you've just gathered, you have to go over the top of them, holding onto your gathers and sorting them out as you go along, making sure this part here, because this is a seam allowance at the top here, making sure that that doesn't get tucked up. All right. So you have got to go seven or eight times backwards and forwards on top of your stitching you have already done and this is another reason why you have to have really really good um, matching thread because you've actually got to go over it twice but if you don't it won't be stabilized all right and you can't put anything on the back because it makes it too thick Right, so I'm now on my second row. I just want you to show you, do you understand? Pull this apart, 
all right and push it up slightly so you don't stretch it along pull it up slightly okay now when you get to the end of the row when you've done that yes you should actually uh, backstitch if I can find it okay there you go okay so this is our gathering now stabilized ready for you to be able to embroider over you mustn't miss that step out with going over it a second time because as I say as it is here it's nice and stable if you'd have embroidered over it before that it would have looked a mess right so I'm now going to get set up to do some embroidery now I also need to tell you that obviously what I've done here I have like the whole dress uh, of the front almost but if you want to just practice this I suggest you just do a strip of material like but please still do it 50 inches or you can do it less but and maybe six inches deep and practice um, this part of the dress right so now's the time you can cut off all these threads okay just get them all off right so I'm now going to do a little bit of embroidery over the top of this now can you see how I've placed this foot so that you're coming down in between your gathering lines, all right? So pretend that's train tracks and here's the train coming along and you've got to keep it on those tracks, all right? So that, let's see how we go. see this so I've just done two lines of embroidery on there um, now if you haven't got many embroidery stitches I wouldn't worry about it just use a zigzag or anything all right because quite frankly when it's all jumbled up together no one knows what it is on there I mean it isn't like doing hand smocking where it has all these beautiful stitches that show you can't see it on here so don't worry too much um right so I'm just going to show you this piece so we've um this piece I've already I previously smocked right so that needs to be cut out so I'm just going to cut this out from here and then I'll come back to you right so I've cut the two pieces off of each end as well right the way down the end of the uh, to the end of the skirt okay whoa it's wobbling about right so we'll take the pins off Right, and there's your little smocked, there is your little smocked top, but on top of there, of course, you've got the yoke that goes on top, all right? Um, now, I think that's all for me for today. Um, I will be back tomorrow. Now, if you have any questions you want to ans ask me about this dress, anything else then please contact me before tomorrow evening and I can address them when I'm doing my video all right um tomorrow I will be doing the little dress little smock little shirt dress which I love my favorite type of sundress and this piece here if you want to be a bit safer can tie around your neck all right perfect for sunny days no strap marks all right so i'll be back tomorrow uh, oh and the other thing is don't forget to look at the words which i put on the screen because they will tell you uh important things that you might like to uh, mark down okay bye for now be back tomorrow